heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Verse 13. Lest any of you be hardened now through the deceitfulness of sin. See, sin is still a transgression against God. Anytime you go to a church that tells you we all sin and we all error, you have to leave away from that church. Because if you are still in sin, when that trumpet sounds, I don't care how much ties you paid. I don't care how many times you came to church. I don't care what board you're on. If you are still living a life of sin, God said, depart from me. I never knew you. Is that right? That's Bible. All right. Verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast We are made partakers of Christ if we do something. We've got to hold the beginning of our, that word confidence again means faith. Hold the beginning of our faith steadfast till we die or till the trumpet sounds. Steadfastly, not halfway through, but all the way through this journey. I've got to still maintain my integrity with God. I have to do it. If, if everybody decides to leave, Lord, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to stay. That's why God does not base his church on quantity. It's all about the quality of the church and not the quantity. See, numbers don't mean nothing to God. Straight is the gate, narrow the way that leads to life, and few there be that can find it. When it all boils down, only a few will have the courage and the determination and the discipline to hold to this book. But it's still up to the individual. You don't have to let nobody trick you. You don't have to let nobody try to persuade you to go to a false church. You don't have to go for that. But if you do, you know why? There's something that inside of you that has weakened in the faith. And when the devil sends a strong wind your way, you're gone. But that's why I said if you get rooted and grounded in the faith. And you are steadfast and unmovable. Man, that... Let that, let that devil come your way and, and you walk away from him. Tell him, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, Satan. Get on behind me. Jesus had to do it. The devil caught Jesus in his flesh, didn't he? Coming off a fast, I believe 40 days and 40 nights. And said, if you fall down and, and worship me, I'll give you all these kingdoms. Now, the devil already knew all them kings that belonged to him in the first place. But he caught him in his natural state as the son of God. Not as the father. And he said, if you serve me. And finally, Jesus had to say, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh out the mouth of God. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Get thee behind me. And the Bible says, when he told him to get behind him, the devil left him for a season. So sometimes you just got to plant your feet and say, in the name of Jesus, devil get on behind me. Hallelujah. You can't sit and argue with somebody till you get sweaty and, and next thing you know you're getting ready to say something that a Christian ain't got no business saying. So the best thing is Satan, the Lord rebuke you, get behind me and go on about your business. Sometime when you can't and sometime maybe you're in a situation at home or fighting the wrong spirit and maybe you got to go out in your car and get you a tape, throw your tape in and drive around the block. Hallelujah. Go somewhere and uh, uh, maybe carry out uh, where there's a little light and open up your Bible and read you some scriptures. I'm showing you how you can overcome the various traps and pitfalls the devil will try to set before you in these evil days by trying to get you out of your straight commitment that an individual must make in serving the Lord. You can't serve him angry, mad at somebody all the time, come to church sorrowful and head down and I don't know if this thing is working. If you're in that kind of shape, 
you need to come before the mountain, stretch out, and tell the Lord, I got a problem here, and I want you to straighten it out before I leave from this mountain. Amen. Oh, oh praise the Lord. I, I, I had to do it. I, I, I've come up at, uh, not here, but on Seven Mile Road, when I was going through some difficult situations. I went up there at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I stretched out. And said, I ain't going nowhere until I hear from heaven. Hallelujah. And I know that it works. Not most of the time, it'll work every time. And we had, sometimes you got to go into fervent prayer to get a breakthrough. The enemy sometimes can come so hard and so fervent. Well, didn't he do it to Daniel? Let's, let, let's turn to, uh, where is that, Daniel? Uh, uh, Daniel. Verse 12, verse 11, 10 and 11, 10 and 11. Now, Daniel was a man who had proven himself before the Lord. Now, again, this story is in the Bible because the Lord wants you to understand that there are certain struggles that you go up against, but nevertheless, God still is going to give you the victory if you can hold on. All right? And he said to me, Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. Uh-huh. Now, Daniel went through a severe test, and the test was so severe, he, I imagine he asked for divine intervention, and God sent an angel to help him out of his problem. Watch now, read. From the first day you did what? From the first day you set your heart in a man to understand or if really to receive the word of God. Once you understand, you're going to receive the word of God if your heart is right. Is that right? From the first day you set your heart and you made up your mind. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, I'm getting steadfast in the faith. From the first day you set your heart to understand, read. And to chasten thyself before thy God. And to discipline yourself. You've got to discipline the flesh and bring it under subjection to the spirit man if you're going to be acceptable in pleasing God. All right, now watch, read. Now it says here, and to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard. Now, the words were not heard until after Daniel did something. Daniel had to discipline himself before the Lord before his words were heard. In other words, Daniel was praying and praying and praying. But he had to get his heart right first, and then he had to discipline himself, and then he got some help from heaven. All right, verse 13. Now, in the latter part of verse 12, it says, I am come for thy words. In other words, God heard your prayer and sent me to help you out of the condition you're in. Verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, uh-huh. Now, this devil was so strong, this situation was so heavy on him, when God sent the first angel, the devil, obviously, that angel had his hand full. He called up to heaven and said, send Michael down, we've got a little serious problem here. Hey, hallelujah. But when Michael came, the archangel, he straightened out the problem. But what I'm trying to let you know, anytime you get...